Hello there, elites. How's it going? It's me, Minecraft Man Waddles here, and welcome back to another episode of your survival series, The Minecraft Guide. I hope you guys are doing well today. So, uh, today we're going to take a break from building, actually, and do a little bit of exploring. We have this really, really cool looking world all around us, and we've seen pretty much none of it. The only exploring that we did was back in episode 4, when we went to find the bees that we imported. So, yeah, I think we're long overdue on this type of project. This should be really interesting. Hopefully today we can find a couple villages, maybe a couple other cool temples that either will raid today or will come back and raid at a later time. But uh, to lead into the adventuring stuff, I'd like to talk about a workstation block. This is a block that we haven't talked about at all quite yet, and it's a really, really useful one. This block is known as the cartography table. The cartography table was added in Minecraft 1.14. It is another workstation block just like the stone cutter and the smoker, only this time this block controls the cartographer profession. Now this block has a unique UI. This is the UI right here. The cartography table is all about maps. You can use this thing to duplicate maps, to lock maps, even to expand maps and that's what we'll be using it for today. So when you go exploring in a world, I definitely always recommend that you bring a map. Maps not only help you explore, but they also look really, really cool if you decide to bring them back home and put them on display. Now to make a map, you'll need a compass and then you'll need some paper. Put that into a crafting table and boom, you have an empty map. After that, go ahead and look at the map and things look cool. Uh, this is actually really, really cool. This is the first time I'm seeing this and wow, I didn't realize uh, how well birchwood matched sand. I, I guess that makes sense. It's like the same color anyways, but wow. <laughs> uh, so now that we have our map made, we can go into the cartography table with this map and then another piece of paper to expand it. Now, uh, like I said, you can do other things with these maps inside of a cartography table, like clone and lock them, but we're not worried about that today. We're, we're just going to talk about expanding. Now, there are four different expansion levels of a Minecraft map. This right here is a fully zoomed out map. You're pretty tiny on it compared to the first map that we were looking at. Now for exploring, I definitely recommend using these fully zoomed out maps. Otherwise, you're gonna need a lot of inventory space. Maybe you'll need like a shulker box or another chest and we definitely don't have that quite yet. Now, since the map is oriented this way, I think we're going to explore to the south and then maybe over, well, you know, Hmm, you know what? No, 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 no. We're gonna go to the north and make a new map and explore that way because we already went that way. Eh, that wouldn't be very fun. But if you can't tell based off of the size, you know your map is fully expanded once you get this inside of a cartography table. That's where you stop expanding. So fully zoomed out maps are great for exploring because they're massive. They're, they're really, really big. Now, we're gonna actually take this cartography table with us and then take a few other things with us. When you go exploring, you should always, always take a bed with you because uh, exploring in the nighttime, not very safe, not very smart either. You should also bring a lot of food. Now, in between episodes, I have been working on breeding up the cows, but I'd rather wait until we have a full sack of steak to grab that stuff, so we're gonna go with a bunch of bread. You should also probably bring some maps. Now, aside from your tools, which you should always have, there are a few other things that you should bring, but they're kind of a little bit more optional. You should definitely consider bringing some blocks to build with in, in case, I mean, you never know, and then maybe even some wool or just some banners if you have banners crafted already. You can actually use banners to mark a location on a map, which is really, really useful. I'll show it off once we actually find something worth marking, but yeah, banners can be a little bit more expensive. We don't have very much wool, so the plan is to hopefully find sheep as we explore and then shear them for their wool and then make more banners and mark everything that's really, really cool. So let's go off this way, but let's talk about making a new map. Eventually, your cursor is going to move off of the map. You can see that my cursor is off of the map because I'm a square now. If you're a pointer, then you're on the map. If you're a square, you're off of the map. To make a new map, I recommend waiting until your cursor is off of the map, then walking a little bit more uh, of a ways, then placing your cartography table, and then realizing that you forgot redstone for a compass, so you gotta go back home. <laughs> Now, once you craft this new map, do not look at it. Like, don't look at it until you are on to wherever you want your next map to be. If you look at your new map while you're still on the old map, it will just be pretty much a duplicate of your old map, and that's definitely not what we want. So, here we are, over here on the new map for sure. 
Now, uh, same deal. We have to expand this a bunch of times. Now, you can speed expand this by just shift clicking everything around and looking at the map really quick and repeating the process, if you get what I mean. Basically, what I'm doing here, moving stuff around really quickly. Now, today's exploration adventure is going to be our first one, so we're going to talk about some basics, and we should definitely start with exploring efficiently. So to explore efficiently, I recommend always bringing a map. Once you move on to the map that you'd like to explore or maybe fill in, I recommend going to one of the corners if you are near a corner. We are definitely near a corner, so we're going to move over to the corner that would be right over here and start from there. Now, let me stress, this is definitely optional. If you happen to be in the middle of a map, don't worry about going to a corner. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Now, once you do reach the corner, take a look at your map and make sure you're actually on the corner. You can tell that you're actually all the way on the corner if all of your map pixels are filled in. Now, after that, pick a direction and basically start moving in that direction. So I think we'll go to the north and see what's up here. Whoa. Okay, <laughs> we have a desert village. This is perfect. This is so cool. But uh, yeah, basically pick a direction and just start moving in that direction. If you're trying to explore somewhere efficiently, running diagonally across the, the center of a map, that's not very efficient because eventually you're going to have to go back and fill everything else in and that could be a pain. So if you move in straight lines, either up and down or left and right, your map will slowly load in and you'll have to do a little bit less uh, like running back and forth. But if you hit a mountain, you're either going to have to climb the thing, which is what we're going to do. We're mountain climbers today. Or you just go around the thing and then somehow go back and fill the map and, you know, stuff like that. It is, it's a pretty basic mechanic filling in a map. Now, if you're planning on displaying your map, definitely make sure you fill in every single pixel. Otherwise, if you're like me, you're going to have a big problem because if you put a map in an item frame and it's not fully filled in, then it's going to look really, really bad. You'll, you'll be able to see the item frame texture behind it. It's my favorite. But Acacia Wood, here we are. So this stuff is, to me, pretty much useless. But we might as well grab some Acacia Wood because uh, we need more options back at home. We don't have a lot of options. Oh, one big thing that you should do before you leave your base, write down the coordinates. Uh, I already know where my base is. I already have a screenshot, so that's kind of why I forgot. But yeah, definitely mark your base. Otherwise, you could have a big problem. But if you have a map like me, uh, it's uh, also not a big deal. You can pretty easily usually figure out where you started from. Now, it looks like we have a giant snowy mountain over there, which is really awesome. I, I don't remember seeing that. I think we could probably, if we don't have any luck anywhere else, climb that mountain and take some of those uh, some of those spruce trees down so we can get some saplings. Spruce wood is one of my favorite woods to build with, so... Yeah, we definitely want to get some of that. Now, before we head off of the mountain, I want to wait for the trees to break and saplings to drop, but a desert village right next to an ocean. That's really cool. The only way this could get even better is if there's like an ocean monument in that ocean. That would be really, really cool, but I feel like that's asking for a bit much because we have an outpost just out of view, then we have a desert temple, now we have a desert village. Like, this is crazy. This is literally the perfect setup for a raid farm and, and everything like that. This is just awesome. We still have to loot that thing, by the way. Maybe today. I don't know, though. Well, I got one sapling. If, if more could drop, that would be really sweet, too. Please, uh, Minecraft. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Is it because I was hating on the acacia wood? Come on, come on. Give me more saplings than that. Hey, there's also pumpkins up here, but you know what? A, to keep my inventory a little free um, in terms of things, I'm going to pass on the pumpkins for now. I'll remember that they're up here, though, and we can come up here and grab them whenever we need them. But uh, for now, they can just kind of wait. Now, I think... I think I'm about ready to move over, to, I guess, to this tree and wait for saplings. <laughs> I, oh, there's sheep over there. Cool. Awesome. This is good. All right. Well, I think three is a decent start for now. We're going to go ahead and carry on with our adventure. So I think our next step is just logically going to be the desert village. Let's check out what's going on over here. Hopefully this is a good village. If it is, maybe we'll keep it and improve it later on. Now, we do already have carrots, and we already have uh, a potato. I haven't planted it yet, but we do have a potato, so I'm not worried about that stuff. What I am uh, hoping to get my hands on is maybe some beetroot, just because why not? But hi, sir, what do you have? You sell armor. I don't think I need any armor. That's that's kind of a ripoff, dude. Where, where, oh, the golem is cracked. What did you do, dude? 
Um, <laughs> uh, we'll have to heal that guy up. But cartographer, hi. Okay, so that's that's what we've been working on today. The cartographer, cool. But you stay in there. Now, what house is this? What do we have here? Okay, this is a blast furnace place. Cool. We haven't talked about the blast furnace quite yet. The blast furnace is pretty cool. Hey, that's a nice bed. I would steal that, but we're going to be nice and leave that there. But the blast furnace is for uh, smelting ores quickly. A stone cutter and some terracotta. Very cool. Maybe we'll come back for that, but I don't know. And then a nitwit. You don't have a job, dude. You should probably get one of those things. Then, uh, what else? You. I haven't seen you. You're a dancing on a, a block? Trying to climb onto the pot? Okay, I'm not even gonna ask. I'm not even gonna ask. I don't think we need any of that stuff. I'll take the bread, though. Um, how about here? What, what is this building? This is, is the same thing. Okay, I've seen this. So, in all honesty, not the best village, but there you go, sir. There you are. You're looking better than ever before. But, yeah, not the best village, but at least we have villagers really close to here. Now, the bell, that thing's pretty nice, though. We're gonna, we're, this is my bell. It was always my bell. Now, the only buildings I haven't checked yet uh, are this one. A hey, cool, nice sea pickles. I didn't know sea pickles generated inside of these things. And then these two towers right next to each other. That's kind of crazy. Uh, what do we have in here? Is there a loot chest on the top of these things? I, yes, there is. I thought so. And there's just bread. <laughs> we'll come back for the cactus later. I'm not really concerned about that. So, we got a little green dye this time. That's pretty cool. And more beds. Hey, bread. We got more bread. But I'm not really, again, concerned about the green dye because we have cactus everywhere. In the last world, would have cared about that stuff a whole lot more. What is this? This is a little cursed for sure. Now, before we leave the village, we should talk about marking it. So, to mark something on a map, first you'll need to make a banner. To craft a banner, you'll need a stick and six wool. Kind of expensive early on. Place the banner down, then click on the banner with your map and boom there you go that banner is marked on your map now you can level things up even more by naming the banner with an anvil and then marking it and the name will show up on the map but we're not really to the point of having an anvil yet and i mean we could we probably have enough iron for sure but yeah we're just not there quite yet so i'm not worried about naming it i'd rather just mark things and then i can come back to them a little later on now, with that village out of the way, it's time to move back over towards the side of this map and continue exploring. The plan is to fill in a decent amount of this map, definitely not all of it because that'll take a long time by foot. Exploring by horse or by elytra is even easier, but a little bit. I'd like to learn about our surroundings. So, it looks like we have another plains biome over here. That's really cool. I wonder if bees would have been there. And then more sheep. I... I think we're definitely going to venture over there and grab the wool from the sheep because if we run across two more cool things, we'd be straight out of wool. So, yeah, kind of a problem. So, I uh, didn't do this in episode one. Got got toasted a little bit, but a bed. A, a bed has to be red, always. OGs remember why yeah, red beds are... That is the most beautiful thing in the world. Uh, but it's distracting. I, I, need to, I need to stay focused and explore. So, a uh, small forest, that's nice, that's, that's very cool, and then it looks like more savanna behind the forest over there, yeah, even more savanna. Now, I'd like to talk about our base a little bit. I kind of, hey, that's cool, that's a new 1.15 thing, babies spawning in the wild, that's really cool, uh, but our base, so... I'm kind of leaning towards staying at our base this time around and not ditching it and moving over to somewhere new, but I definitely want to know what you guys think. I'd like to open the conversation up a little bit. I did ask some of you guys on stream uh, in the first stream, and a lot of you actually said to, to just hang around where we are currently and actually just improve the, improve the area. Personally, that's something that I kind of like the idea of. Where we settled is pretty boring, and it would be really cool if we could transform it from something boring to something actually interesting. But again, I'd love to know what you guys think. Should we move away from where we are and move somewhere else? These mountains are pretty cool, but in the hardcore world, we kind of just did a mountain base, and eventually, once the mountain update hits, I'm definitely going to want to make a base in the mountains, so... I don't know about something like this. Even though this is a savanna hill, uh, still, you know, it's a mountain base. I don't know. I do have a few ideas when it comes to our base, though. I'm kind of thinking about maybe, honestly, making our base a giant castle, like putting walls around it eventually and living inside of it, making it a town again, but uh, definitely keeping the build style a little bit different. In the last season, we started with, like, 
I guess kind of a medieval style, but then we switched up to some sort of, I don't even know what it is, it's like a crazy modern style where we were building literal giant versions of things, like a giant turtle and a, a giant sea pickle. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that again, uh, I don't know, but my other idea, the other, hey, an outpost, hmm, we're going to raid the thing. Anyways, my other idea is maybe a cave base of some sort, but that's a little less fun. You don't get to actually build a building, it's all inside, you know, so I don't know, uh, just share your thoughts down below, but we have an outpost, so... We can actually use the banners on top of the thing to actually mark it, and that'll be the plan. But what we should probably do before we write it is place a bed down and then click on it once, and our respawn point is set, just in case anything bad happens. Now, I don't think anything bad will happen. Pillagers are, they're just not that bad. We should be able to move up here and loot it really, really easily, actually, and then just jump right off of it. So, uh, I hear somebody charging their bow. No, not up here. What do we got? Uh, hey, we got dark oak. Well, that's pretty cool. We're just gonna go ahead and break the chest like that. Boom. And then the banner will mark you like, like that. And, uh, then we jump. And, oh, I did it. <laughs> that was, that was crazy. That's like the first time I actually was able to place the water down. Wow. Okay. So cool. We got the bed. We're out of here. Sorry, villagers. Have a good day. Hey, you're not the nicest dudes, but yeah, have a good one. I'll see you next time, man. <laughs> we actually got out of there with the loot. Now, I didn't get a good look at the loot. I want to look at it again, but uh, nice. Oh, wow. Even more nice. Another village. Uh, the pill Okay, they're still following me. Dudes, no, 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 no. You guys need to stop it. Hey, a desert well, too. That's pretty cool. But, hey, uh, pillagers. Uh, okay, I think we're good. We, we should be in the clear now. Um, uh, yeah, we're good. We're good. Time to sleep. Lots of horses in this world too, which is awesome. We'll definitely be able to get a horse sooner rather than later, and it looks like this land that we're living on is a lot better for horses too, because there's not just, you know, basically a bunch of islands. In the last season, we lived pretty much on a giant island, so yeah, horses definitely just aren't the best way to do things. But village number two. So, same deal. We're going to go ahead and mark this village, and then later on, we'll come back and name banners, or maybe even just color code things to label everything that we found. But for now, again, that. There we go. That's good. Now, the village. What do you guys have this time around? This is for the brewing stand. I don't think there's ever loot in there. Uh, you guys don't have jobs. You should probably get one. A nothing there, just a white bed. Hey, stone cutter man, right? Maybe? I guess not. Uh, how about over here? A loot. Okay, an emerald. Hey, that's pretty good. And the potatoes, but again, we have potatoes already, so I'm not worried about it. But the apples, I'll definitely take those. Those are pretty cool. Now, uh, you, you're the shepherd building, right? Yeah, the loom. The loom is really cool. Um, how about over here? Another loot building? Yes, and an emerald, and a lot of loot in this one, too. That's crazy. Wow, uh, bread is mine. Thank you. That The potatoes can stay, though. Over here is just the building. Nothing there. Nothing cool at all. And then you. You got nothing as well. So maybe maybe there's one and then there's one building way out on that island. That's, that's kind of cool. But uh, even more importantly, the bell. We're, we're going to just go ahead and take this. Thank you very much, kind of villagers. You won't notice the thing. That's mine now. Uh, hey, no more emeralds and more bread. But honestly, I think I need to stop taking bread. I really don't need any more. And hey, another bell. Maybe we'll grab that. I don't know though we kind of already have two two is maybe fine for now what is this though anything cool i guess not i think it's like a stable that should be a stable now beetroot hmm i don't think any of this is beetroot i don't think so uh how about you e are you a beetroot no you're a carrot i don't really want a carrot <laughs> uh okay we're gonna take the bell and then it's time to sail we've hit an ocean now when you're exploring and you hit an ocean uh, that's pretty much good news oceans are so so much easier to explore because y you don't have to run or jump or anything like that you literally get in a boat and avoid the the bubble columns the water so now ah, how far do we want to go well uh first we definitely have to go back over and fill in the edge of the map that's how i want to do things
I didn't mention this, I sort of just did it. When you're exploring with a map, I definitely recommend just throwing that boy in your offhand and not worrying about it. You could totally leave it in your hotbar and scroll and check it every once in a while, but if you do that, you might end up missing areas of your map. A map will only fill in if it is in your hand, whether it be your on hand or your off hand. So if you're trying to fill the map in, put it in your off hand. It's just so much easier and it doesn't take up that much of the screen. So it's not really that big of a deal. I guess it blocks like a tiny corner square, but like, are you seriously playing Minecraft and only looking at that corner? A hey, probably not. And if you are, well, my friend, you're, you're weird. Sorry, uh, you, you're just kind of weird. Oh, is this a warm ocean? Are we finally finding a warm ocean? Warm oceans are my favorite ocean biome. They look so, so good, but I really can't tell. Uh, you can kind of tell from the water difference, but it might just be a lukewarm ocean. Warm oceans are the oceans that spawn uh, with a bunch of coral on the bottom of them. I don't see any coral, so maybe this is just lukewarm. Uh, you know what? We'll just go ahead and check. Yeah, lukewarm. Oh man. Hey, hey. Well, hey, that's okay. At least it's better than the than a, just a bunch of icebergs. So I guess it's a partial win. But we have reached the top of our map, and it looks like there's actually another outpost over there and another village in the distance. Hey, but that would be off of the map. So I think we're gonna go ahead and skip those for now, and actually just row over and then start heading and a well too. Wow. This world is crazy for generation. I'm gonna do a seed reveal in like episode 10, so keep your eyes out for that, but uh, wow, this is an amazing world. Wow, like seriously, this is crazy. But uh, anyways, we're gonna go ahead, I think, and start to head home now, and we'll just fill in the strip right next to the one that we have already seen. A uh, little boat pro tip for you guys. If you're in a boat, uh, press control while you're in the boat and you'll start rowing, I, I think, a little bit faster. It definitely looks faster. It's got to be faster, I think. Basically, you're triggering sprint while you're sailing and uh, I think it's more efficient. I don't have an exact statistic on that one, but I think it is. So, I'm on my way back home, and I found what I think has got to be the smallest village ever. At least the smallest one that I've ever seen. I think this is... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah. This is like three buildings in the village. This is tiny, and it looks like there's another village over there, off in the horizon, that we'll have to come back to later. And then the village that we've already seen is over there across the water. But let's go ahead and check this village out. Uh, hey, a smithing table. That's really cool. This block is another workstation block, but it has no function yet. It, it just looks cool on the top. I like to use it for floors. But, yep, uh, useless block. <laughs> now, what do we have? We have even more bread. I, I mean, at this point, I guess why not? We'll take the sticks too. And hey, actually, you know what? We'll take the chest because we did grab one from, from that outpost. Now, uh, you guys, what are you guys doing? Are you, are you just, you just, you're just chilling. Uh, you're the weaponsmith. Yeah, toolsmith. That, that's what I meant. Um, you are in the ceiling. My guy, are you good? You're in the ceiling. What's, what's going on with that? E yeah, that looks painful. That looks really really painful we're just gonna go ahead and leave him to whatever he's doing i don't even want to know any beetroot here though uh, nope looks like wheat <laughs> and now the cartographer what do we have here a cartography table and a lot of nothing else i think yep all right uh well uh, carrying on making my way back home running fast and not too long later, home sweet home at last. So, as you probably would have expected, I made it back home safely, we're good. Now, I actually started dropping off our, um, I guess, loot and getting it organized, but the maps, in my opinion, a map should always be displayed. So, we're gonna go ahead and take two leather out of our stockpile here and go ahead and make a, make a display area for our map. Now, I think that I'd like to show the map off right over here, like along this pathway. I don't think I'm ever going to put anything here other than maybe a bridge. So this should be the perfect spot, but hey, I don't think I want to use birch wood for the thing. I think oak would probably fit a whole lot better. So I think we'll do something like this. We'll go log, log, and then log, log. 
log log, more logs like that, and then finally the item frames are right there in the middle, and then the maps go like that and like that. Now, they don't look the best because we didn't finish filling it in, but eventually I, I think that'll look pretty good. You know what? Maybe we should put a top on this too to make it look better. Does this look weird? A, a little bit. Uh, yeah, it does. How about that? Does that look weird? Eh, a little bit less. How about this? Is that good? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's good. You know what? We're going to leave it like that for now. It's not that big of a deal anyways. But yeah, we have to finish filling in the map uh, for sure. But I think we'll wait until we have a horse to do that because uh, it takes a long time to walk and fill in maps. Now, we are the proud owner of three bells as well. Bells are really only useful for like raids and things like that. So uh, we don't really have much of a use for them, but we'll go ahead and put one there anyways, almost like it's a doorbell, but it's definitely not a doorbell. So that'll live there. And then the other ones, I guess we'll just put them in maybe the valuable chest for now, since you can't craft those things. But I think that is just about everything for this episode of the Minecraft Guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, as always, drop a like and subscribe. Remember, patrons get these videos early, and there'll be a stream recap in the next episode. The stream happened yesterday, so again, yeah, it's kind of weird, but uh, yeah, the recap will be next episode, so keep your eyes out for that. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Waddles, and happy almost new year, or new year if you're in 2020. Like for who's watching in 2019. Hey, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, goodbye everyone. Have a good day.